Hi right, guys, um, good to be here. Uh, it's kind of strange, um, frankly, not being able to see folks, uh, but that's uh, that's the way life goes these days, COVID-19. So anyway, um, my name is Asim Parak. Um, I have, ha I have, uh, I have a, a plethora of development software development experience um, here at JFrog uh, in our solutions engineering team. Uh, you know, helping out uh, our customers in their um, journey for DevOps. Okay, so a uh, couple of things that I want to that's what I want to go through. Okay, from an agenda perspective, we're going to be talking about um, you know, binary and repo management. Right, uh, we'll we'll get into uh, CI build integration. I'll show you a demo of it as well. We'll be using Jenkins today. Right, then I'll I'll talk about the power of metadata. Right, uh, and we'll start getting into the security and permission model for Artifactory, uh, which, which is extre extremely strong in that it gives you fine grained control over who has access to what. At the end, uh, we'll do a very quick overview of our JFrog platform, which contains, frankly, all the products that we have, not just Artifactory, so you understand the lay of the land. You can also understand how uh, you know JFrog can help you. Right, literally from the time you check in your code to the time you uh, release your, uh, you want to give your release contents to your end consumers. And at the very end, we'll do a recap and summary and, and a survey as well. Okay. So let's talk about binary management, right? So um, basically, uh, the, the concept is that you want something, you want a single source of truth, a tool that is a single source of truth from the time you checking your code, right, for you to get your dependency from it, it's for you to go ahead and, um, you know, utilize it as a platform uh, where your test team uh, and your staging team and your prod team and your development team, obviously, right, interact with, with that, right? It also uh, should provide you, the, the repo manager should also provide you a way for you to uh, do artifact management. So the way we lay out things, right, the, the idea is, uh, for you to be able to use your native tools, and my native tools, I mean Docker, you know, Docker commands for Docker, um, you know, apt-get for Debian, yum for uh, RPM. So these are very native commands that you all are used to pretty much, right? So, we, so the repo manager should be able to give you uh, an ability for you to use it against uh, the repo manager. And, and at the end, your distribution, right, should also be a link to your repo manager. So the point I'm trying to make here is that the repo manager right, should be utilized as a single source of truth. And you will hear me say this again and again and again. So uh, what is Artifactory? Artifactory is a universal binary repository manager. Right? It's, this is, uh, so we support 27 plus packages. It's a, it's a place where you store all your artifacts, artifacts and you go ahead and resolve your third party dependencies from it. I mean, a picture is worth a thousand words. So here in this picture, right, we have a bunch of clients, right, that are, uh, you know, uh, trying to resolve their third-party dependencies, you know, uh, via various internet repos, right, versus when you have Artifactory in the middle, you have your CI server, you have a bunch of developers, right, they're all going through Artifactory, and Artifactory is doing the resolution for you, thereby utilizing Artifactory as a single source of truth, okay? Um, we have different types of repositories, Right, uh, we have a local, remote, and virtual. Just you know, just I'm just gonna uh, glance through it to make sure that I give you these concepts, right? Uh, so local repository are repositories where you physically store all your artifacts if you're building something, right? Uh, Maybe a Debian package, may it be a, a jar file, a Maven jar file, or a Gradle file, right? Or an RPM package. All of that you actually go ahead and and push into Artifactory again, utilizing, making sure you utilize your are native tools, right? It could be a Docker container as well, right? Um, remote repositories are basically lazy caches in that, um, like you, you know, they are utilized. Uh, they are utilized for you to resolve your third-party dependency. So if you're writing a Maven component, right, you're going to Maven Central, J Central, something like that, right? Instead of you going directly to your internet repo, you're gonna go ahead and have Artifactory broker that for you, and you connect to Artifactory, right? Uh, virtual repos are uh, basically think of it as uh, you know an aggregation, a box where you have your local and remote. And the beauty of uh, it's one of the best practice, by the way, to utilize as many virtual repos as possible, right? But it gives you uh, the ability for you to have only one endpoint. 
for you to push your artifacts into artifactory and pull your artifacts from artifactory. Okay. Uh, so at this time, right? This is a this is a very. In, I'm sorry, it's 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 it has a lot of information, but it's a very interesting uh, diagram. And this is what we call our ten step diagram, right? We're in. Uh, we're in. We go ahead and show you what the flow is and how to utilize artifactory as a single source of truth. So here we have, for the sake of discuss this discussion, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that this person is a he. Right, so uh, this developer, he goes ahead and he's trying to build something on step number one. He goes, let's say he's building a Maven component, right? So he goes ahead and, uh, you know, puts in the third party dependencies in his, you know, in his POM file, say he's doing a Maven build, so POM file, right? So as soon as he does that, you know, the request goes to Artifactory and, all, and Artifactory goes to the internet repos for Artifactory to resolve those third-party dependencies. So let's say he's utilizing Log4j or binding for Kafka, right, or bindings for, for Zookeeper, right? Um, the reason I'm saying that is because I've used all of them, right? So um, uh, the, the Artifactory actually goes and resolves those third-party dependencies, right, and pushes those dependencies back to the developer's machine. At that point in time, the developer completes the build using the build tool, let's say Maven, Right and does uh, he does the unit and integration testing and you know very very soon he's pretty much done with his uh, integration and unit testing so he pushes in his code into Artifactory uh, into sorry into the VCS system once the VCS system has it right uh, there are triggers that you can that you can go ahead and and enable which enables which uh, goes ahead and triggers your CI server to do the build. Right, the CI server goes to the the build and tools uh, dependency managers and build managers and tries to do a build. And similarly, just like the developer, right, the CI server is now uh, resolving those third-party dependencies, pretty much the same as that developer. Uh, and guess where they, the the CI server is going to go? It's going to go to Artifactory, right, and resolve all the third-party dependencies, right? So here, it doesn't matter when either. It, it doesn't matter if the developer was uh, resolving the third-party dependencies or your CI server is actually resolving third-party dependencies, they're all utilizing Artifactory as a single source of truth. So we move further, right? At this point in time, the CI server actually goes ahead and does a build, you know, and uh, if you have X-Ray plugged in, it's gonna go ahead and from the CI server, it's gonna go ahead and ask X-Ray to, to go ahead and do a scan on the build for, um, for security vulnerabilities and license compliance. And let's assume everything is fine, right? The scan goes fine. Uh, X-ray, the artifactory goes ahead and tells the CI server that, hey, the scans were fine, right? The CI server goes ahead and finishes the build. At that point in time, the CI server, which is Jenkins in our example, it pushes the build to artifactory, right? Once the build is an artifactory, your QA team gets notified that they need to go ahead and do some testing. So they pull the, they pull the build and the build art built artifacts right from Artifactory directly, right? And they do their testing. Let's assume the testing goes fine. And at this point in time, the testing, the test team, right, they go ahead and uh, push metadata, uh, let's say test equals to pass or perf test equals to pass, right, onto the built artifacts, right? Uh, once that is done. Right, we can utilize. You can utilize your, you know, you can utilize the distribution mechanism to distribute these packages, these artifacts, rather, right, to your end consumers. And guess where the distribution is going to get the artifacts from? From Artifactory, right? So the point I'm trying to make is, in all of this, from the time the developer has pushed artifacts, right, uh, to Artifactory, to the time where CS server is building uh, the artifacts, to the time where test team actually gets it, right, to the time where you're just Distributing, you can see that we are utilizing Artifactory to mimic your SDLC process, right? So your dev, your test, your staging, and your prod, all of them are actually going through Artifactory, right? Utilizing Artifactory as a single source of truth. So I talked about some best practices here. One of the best practices is to utilize uh, virtual repos, and the other practice, best practices to make sure you're utilizing Artifactory as a single source of truth, okay? So that's what this 10-step diagram defect, depicts, frankly. So it's demo time, right? So as we promised, it's gonna be more uh, demo uh, in this than, than the slides. I'm gonna go through the slides to give you some basic information, then I'm gonna jump into uh, demo. So what I'm gonna do is let me go ahead and uh, share my screen. Um, I should be sharing my screen. Uh, look, um, so basically what I'm doing is I am logging. I have, the, I have the Orbiter instance myself, right? I'm gonna go ahead and log into it. 
uh, here. Uh, so um, uh, as soon as you log in, right, you get the topology view, right, as to where all your uh, JFrog products are. So in this case, we have, uh, you know, one JFrog product here in this zone. You know, it gives you a geographical uh, view of where all your uh, JFrog products are. Right, uh, and we have an edge node here. Right, for the sake of this conversation, we are only talking about uh, artifact uh, artifactory. So I'm not going to get into J no uh, edge nodes and all that. I'm going to quickly talk about some of the basic concepts of artifactory to make sure <clears throat> that we are on the same page. So when you log in, you have uh, you know your admin tab and so your your application tab on your admin tab. In the admin tab, this is where you go ahead and create uh, various repos, right? I've already talked about local, remote, and virtual. Again, distribution is also type of a repo, which I'm not going to get into, right? Uh, because we are only concerned about artifactory right now, and we are not talking about distribution use cases. So I'm going to skip this right now, but you can go ahead and create, you know, a local repo. It's very simple to create a repo. You just click on a on a repo, right? Choose basically whatever package you want, right? So you can choose Maven, right? You give it a name, uh, frankly, and uh, you know, and and click on save and finish, and you're pretty much done, right? There are some additional um, uh, options that are provided for you. I mean, Artifactory. Just talk about one. Artifactory uh, uh, gives you application-based replication, so you can go ahead and replicate between two different. Uh, artifactory instances, and right? it helps you with respect to different themes, right? And you can, if you have, uh, you know, if you have artifactory actually deployed in two different, in, you know, two different zones, right? Or you have two different artifactories or multiple artifactories, you can utilize the application to replicate artifacts between these uh, instances, right? We support push, pull, event-based, and and uh, and cron-based application. Okay, so it's very simple. The 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 point I'm trying to make is very simple for you to create, uh, uh, you know, repos, right? So similarly, you can click on remote, click on new, and you're done. And virtual, do the same exact thing. Okay. Um, the other important concept in Artifactory is. Um, uh, users, groups, and permissions, right? So this is basically defines an ACL. We'll get into it a bit more because I have a separate section on it, right? Uh, from a, another security perspective, Artifactory can be integrated with multiple identity providers or IDPs, right? SAML, SSO, OAuth, uh, LDAP, right? You name it and we have it. We can integrate with it, okay? Uh, another important concept is uh, looking at bills, right? And we'll get into bills. Uh, I'm going to be getting into it right after this section. Right, so I'll I'll uh, I'll move on past it right now. And the last aspect, the last but certainly not the least, is whenever you have a repo manager, one of the most important aspects of a repo manager is well, I have a repo manager, but how do I go ahead and onboard my community, my developers? Right, that is extremely important. Right, you want to be able to have very easy instructions for developers to be able to utilize native tools for them to push artifacts into Artifactory and pull artifacts from Artifactory, right? So, you know, you can, let's take our Docker, right? So we have what we call set me up instructions, right? When you click on a particular repo, when you click on set me up, right? We give you very specific instructions, right? They are context sensitive to the package that you have chosen, which is Docker in this case, and also to the, the repo that you have chosen. So we give you very specific instructions on how to deploy artifacts using the native Docker command, right? And also how to resolve artifacts using the native Docker commands against Artifactory. So just remember, set me up is one of your best friends, right? So keep that in mind, right? So again, here we talked about basic concepts on Artifactory, we talked about repo, we talked about you know ACLs, we talked about IDPs. Right, identity providers. That is, we talked about. We're going to talk about build right after this. Right, build and build integration, and then we also uh, talked about you know onboarding your uh, onboarding your uh, uh, community, your developers, and whatnot. Right. So that's the end of kind of a, a demo, a kind of a hands-on demo uh, for from a basic artifactory concepts perspective. Okay. So I'm going to get into um, the next concept. Right, which is um, uh, which is build and CI integration. So Artifactory actually goes ahead and integrates with a plethora of uh, various uh, CI servers. Right, they're all named here. I'm not going to go through it. You're going to get the slide deck, so you you know you will you you know what I'm talking about, right? So uh, today, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be 
uh, you know, talking about, we're going to be talking about Jenkins and how the Jenkins is integrated. By the way, uh, um, uh, JFrog also have a CICD uh, product. We call it JFrog Pipelines. It, you know, uh, Pipelines gives you, the, it's a YAML-based tool. It gives you the ability for you to, um, uh, you know, not only do your CI, not only automate your CI, but CD as well. Okay, and we go ahead and support a plethora of build tools as well. They're all listed here. For the sake of this demo, we're going to be utilizing Maven, right? So, um, you know, uh, with respect to the CI servers, any kind of missing functionality, right? We have uh, our, by the way, whatever I'm showing you with respect to our UI, right? You can do all of that and a lot more, right? With our REST API. And we have a, we have a CI tool, CLI tool, which I'm going to quickly glance through. I'm going to give you a demo of it as well, but it's a very smart uh, CLI, CLI tool, right? So uh, the CI server, you can go ahead and utilize our plugins, right? We're going to be looking at a plugin for Jenkins today, right? But you can utilize the, the plugin for you to, you know, download dependencies, upload packages, right? And publish the build information. We'll, we'll closely look at that uh, today. Okay. Um, so going forward, right? So it's, it's time for us to do a quick demo of the CI, right? So let me go ahead and... Um, uh, let me go ahead and do a screen share, right? Uh, so here you go, right? So uh, when you get your instance, right, your your demo instance, right, you'll be able to get into your into the CI a server which is Jenkins, right? Uh, so basically, it's the same exact IP address as this, but except for port eighty eighty two is going to be eighty eighty, right? Um, and uh, I'm sure that. Uh, you know, we will uh, will give you the the uh, we'll, uh, we'll provide you with the uh, creds as well. Um, so I'm logging in. Uh, you know, the username is Froggy, and we'll give send you the the password as well. All right. So I'm logging into Jenkins. Basically, the way this works is you. So let's say let's assume that I have Jenkins right now, and I, I have I just started Jenkins, and it has right now it's not integrated with Artifactory. So the first question is. Well, how the heck do I go and integrate it with Artifactory, right? So a couple of things that you need to do, and they're, they're very simple things, frankly, right? You need to go into Manage Plugins, right? And you need to go ahead and install uh, Artifactory plugins. So all you have to do is, you know, uh, here, you just go into Available, uh, you know, and, and type in Artifactory, and it will show you the Artifactory plugin. You click on Install, and you're done, frankly, okay? That's that's pretty much what what it boils down to. Okay, so sorry, going back to you know, so here's here's your artifactory plugin uh, um, uh, here, um, and then um, hang on a second, uh, here's your artifactory plugin that I've installed. Right, so that's one thing that you need to do. Then going back to Jenkins, you need to make sure that uh, you have created credentials. Uh, uh, this is how I have done it. So you can create gro global or scope. I've created global credentials. And the credentials uh, you know, uh, should be, you, know, you can utilize your uh, admin username password. You can, you, you can create a specific user for your CI server. right? Or you can actually go ahead and use an access token if you like. Because, and, and access tokens are nothing but faceless users. So anyway, for this uh, integration, I have added a credentials with respect to you know admin and uh, and the API key for the admin. Okay, uh, we'll we'll see where the uh, API key is for the admin when we start getting into security and permissions. Okay, so this is the second. So the first thing is to install the plugin. Second thing is for you to create a um, uh, a credentials. Right. The third thing is for you to go ahead and you know make sure that you've enabled for Maven. I'm just going to talk about Maven right now. Right. For you to enable your Maven, uh, uh, you know your Maven tool here, right? Um, so you can go ahead and say you can go and add Maven, right? Give it an, a name M3. This is important because we'll talk about that, right? And uh, go ahead and add install, and it's very painless. Okay. So once you have done that, that was a third thing, right? And then you basically go ahead and configure. And again, you're doing this only once. Once this is done, you don't have to do this again. Then once you're done, right, you go into configure systems and you configure the artifactory 
a plugin there, right? And it's very simple for you to to uh, go ahead and, and uh, configure it. Right? You provide the server ID, right? Whatever name you want to provide, it doesn't matter. Right? You provide the URL. This is what the URL looks like. The reason it says local host here should be, you know, the DNS or uh, IP address for your artifactory. The reason it says local host is because we have uh, Jenkins and artifactory. Uh, installed on the same machine, right? And just to make it easier for you guys so that you don't have to reconfigure this, uh, you know, we came up with this idea of putting local host, okay? That way, you know, whoever is actually spinning up a new instance, you don't have to muck around with it. Then you utilize this credentials. Remember the step number two, you utilize your credentials here, right? You can go ahead and test the connection and you're pretty much done, right? Once you're done, frankly, Right, that's when you start creating your pipeline. So when we go into uh, Jenkins, I've created a pipeline for us here, right? Uh, it's very soon I've done a bunch of builds here, right? So you click on uh, configure, right? I'm sure some of you already know this, and right? you uh, created a so I've created a pipeline. Let me quickly go through the pipeline here, right? So um, uh, here I'm just basically artifactory is now an object, and I'm getting it from. Remember this name? We gave that name when we were configuring uh, artifactory plugin. So um, we gave that name. So this is the name that they're using. So we are getting an object out of uh, Artifactory Server, which is the server that we, we configured, right? Then we, we go ahead and take an art, the Maven 2, the Maven uh, new build uh, or Maven expect out of it, right? We create, we, create a, uh, so we create a build info object, right? We are utilizing, uh, there is a code. You all have access to it. It's, a, it's public repo, right? A project example that we have a Maven project example, right? So that's what we are referencing here from us from a staging perspective. We're creating different stages. This is where we are cloning it, and then we are configuring artifacts. Remember when I was saying that you know you need to go ahead and make sure that you have a Maven tool installed, and that M3 was the name of that Maven tool. This is where this is important, and and from an artifactory perspective, right? Backend Maven is um, is a virtual repo. Let me quickly show it to you guys. Right, that I have created. Again, I'm trying to make sure that you guys understand that you know utilizing um, uh, utilizing you know virtual repos is uh, the best practice here. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and filter it based on Maven. Right, so here here is your backend Maven. Right, so this backend Maven virtual repo repo right has two. Uh, included artifactory. It has backend local for you to push your local artifacts, right? It has a remote repo for you to resolve your third-party dependencies. It only has two. By the way, you can utilize, uh, you know, artifactory to mimic your SDLC process. As I've said earlier, you can create different types of repos. You can create a dev, then a test, then a stage, then a prod, right? Put that into uh, into one virtual repo, right? And then you can utilize our a REST API, and there's a specific section within the REST API called Promotion API for you to promote your binaries, right, from your you know dev to your test uh, repo to your staging repo to your prod repo, thereby again utilizing Artifactory, right, as a single source of truth. Okay, so anyway, going back to Maven, right? So you basically for for me to release for me to release my uh, deploy my artifacts or to resolve my artifacts. I'm just pushing it into one endpoint, which is which is cool because backend Maven is our virtual repo, and that's all I have to worry about. And internally, right, when you push an artifact into a virtual repo, virtual repo understands that oh, somebody's pushing it, so I need to put it into a particular local repo. And if you're resolving third-party dependencies, it knows which repo, which ver remote repo to utilize for it to uh, go ahead and resolve those third-party dependencies. Then you are actually getting the build info out, right? And you are saying, hey, capture all the build information. Once you are done, then you will, and then we are doing some cleanup, right? And we are actually kicking off your, your build. And at the end, once the build is done, the last aspect is actually uh, pushing your build info into Artifactory. So at this point in time, what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and create another build. So we have build number eight, right? We're going to go ahead and kick off another build. We'll start looking quickly, looking into the console output for those build, for this particular build. You see that the build is going on, right? Um, it's probably going to take a minute or so, right? And uh, once we are, and then you know, it's going to get pushed into Artifactory. So let's go and uh, go into Artifactory, right? Uh, here is basically your Maven build right now. We are building, uh, you know, we are done. So it just published, 
uh, you know, this particular uh, build, build number nine, which we published from, from just Jenkins, right? So when you go into the, look into the build info and you have the build ID, where is it coming from, right? Uh, and the build time, and since X-ray is not integrated right now with this, particular artifact is showing, it's not showing the X-ray status. You know, you can go and click on a build info. Uh, we, we, as published modules, you can see what actually, what uh, modules were published. When you click on a published module, may not only give you all the artifacts that are published as part of that published module, but we also give you all the dependencies. At the same time, right, you can see all the environment variables used at the time the build was done, literally, you know, freezing this build in time, right? So you get the your bill of material directly from Actifactory. Extra data, right, it's not integrated, but it will show you all the security and license vulnerabilities. You can associate Jira tickets, right, to the particular Artifactory, right, to, to sorry, to this particular build. One of, this is one of the coolest features, right? So let's say that build number nine is failing your test testing uh, process, and you say, well, what did I change, right? So first thing, so so you're trying to figure out what was what is the problem. The first thing that's gonna pop into your mind as a developer is, well, what did I change, right? One of the best features of Artifactory is using a diff. So you can do a diff between, uh, you know, build number eight and build number nine, and it tells you what was updated, what was changed with respect to your artifacts, also with respect to your dependencies, also with respect to your environment variables. So let's assume somebody changed the Java version under your nose, right? You will realize right here, right? It's a huge help, right? Release history tells you how your build has progressed, right, from your, you know, for, through your SDLC process, from your um, artifactory, from your development to testing to staging to prod, all of that will be shown here, right? So anyway, this was a quick introduction on how the CS server is configured with respect to Jenkins for Artifactory, how to push a build, what did the push, what did the pipeline actually look like, right? And also, um, uh, and also, frankly, right, looking at the build information within within, Arti within Artifactory. Okay, so hopefully it was uh, helpful to you. So now we're gonna get into, I uh, see that we are getting a bunch of questions. We'll go ahead and address those questions uh, and then I have some time allocated for it. Okay, so uh, let's talk about artifactory metadata and automation tools, right? So, um, I mean, in this day and age, frankly, metadata is the king, right? Why is because, you know, as the time is passing by, right, the number of binaries are exploding, right? Which means that, you know, we need to have a way for us to find whatever we want to find. It's like finding a needle literally in the haystack, right? So. Uh, one of the best ways to do it is for you to associate metadata slash properties slash tags. I've sued, I've heard of these, you know, the same exact concept with different terms. So I'm saying it out. So hopefully this this will make uh, you know you guys uh, you know grasp the idea. The metadata properties tag they're all the same things, right? So the idea is for you to go ahead and associate metadata to artifactory to your artifacts, right? and utilize that metadata right, to get those artifacts out, right? We're gonna also quickly touch up on automation tools. As I mentioned earlier, that uh, whatever I'm showing you, right, right, the whole UI is built on top of our own REST API. Right? And you can do a lot more. We have also have, right, so uh, we also have a bunch of, um, so let's talk quickly go back into our metadata, right? So they're basically nothing but key value pairs, right? You can assign it to pretty much anything. Right, you want right, and uh, you can do re you know resolution. You can associate. You can search for it. You can resolve artifacts based on that, right? And you can do that all with our uh, with, with UI, with REST API, with CLI, which is our command smart command line interface, right? Uh, and, and as I mentioned, they are searchable and resolutionable, right? So um, I have provided uh, you know the necessary um, uh, the necessary uh, wiki pages. Uh, for you to look at the REST API or CLI, right? And we also have a very strong a query language that is called Artifactory a query language that you can use, right, for you to do a lot of uh, things in a pretty automated fashion, okay? Uh, so rest some of the REST API examples. I'm gonna skip through it because frankly, you're gonna, you have, should have already gotten that slide or you will get these slides and you can go through them, but I, I'm more interested in showing you, right, uh, kind of uh, the demo here, right? So I'm gonna, I'm quickly going through it. Again, CLI is a smart client. Why are we calling it a smart client? Because, you know, if you are trying to download an artifact via REST API or upload an artifact via REST API, right? A CLI makes it a lot more simple and you'll see it. You'll see the difference, right? 
uh, smart in a sense. So that's one smartness. The other smartness is that you know, whenever we are storing artifacts in Artifactory, we are storing it with a checksum with a unique fingerprint called checksum-based storage. It's a SHA-256 value, right? When we go ahead and, uh, you know, if you are trying to uh, upload a particular file that is already there, right? So you have 50 files, you have no idea, right? That out of those 50 files, you know, 30 of them are already there, 20 of them are not, right? When you use utilize REST API, you have to go ahead and you know, run the REST API yourself. But when you go ahead and do CLI, CLI is smart enough for it to calculate the checksum value, talk to the artifactory server and say, hey, do you have this particular artifact? If artifact say, artifactory says, yes, I have it, it's gonna tell you if it's uploaded, but frankly, the artifact is already there. So in a nutshell, in this example that I was giving, if you have 50 artifacts that you are uploading in one shot, right, 30 of them are already there, JFrog CLI is smart enough for it to only upload the 20 artifacts, right? So you're going to save on a lot of bandwidth there, okay? It, and that's the reason why I was saying it's checksum aware. You can, you know, it has multiple supports, multiple configurations and, and whatnot, right? And it has, you know, it's downloading artifacts or uploading artifacts require, you know, using multiple threads. You do it much faster, all right? Now, um, this is basically the CLI syntax. You can quickly go through it, right? Uh, the most important is you give JFrog, JFrog CLI is called JFrog, uh, right? And you can provide it a target, RT for Artifactory, right? Then you have, you know, X-Ray and whatnot, you can provide a bunch of options, right? Uh, here are examples of CLI. Uh, you can go through it yourself. I'm gonna be utilizing CLI here as well. Our a AQL is a very important aspect in that it's a query language, right? It's very powerful. It translates to very efficient uh, database queries, and I'm going to go through an example here as well, right? And the best combination is you can use AQ AQL along with the, with the, uh, with the, um, our CLI, and you will do wonders, frankly, and you will see me doing that really quick, right? So it's, uh, without a further ado, it's coming to demo time, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so we, if you guys remember, right, we just went ahead and, um, we just went ahead and and uh, uh, uploaded a bunch of artifacts, right, for um, for our Maven build name, right? So here you can utilize, right, Artifactory here. So what I'm doing here is I'm just sending a post request, right, to my Artifactory server, right? Uh, I am, uh, you know, this is a post request, so it's a, I'm pr providing the content type. And then what I'm doing is instead of me providing a username and a password, frankly, I'm providing my API key directly so that I don't have to worry about the username, right? Then I'm basically saying, hey, I'm interested in, in a search, right, for uh, the build name Maven example. Remember the Maven example uh, build that we just did? And build number three. You can do it build number nine, build number eight, whatever you want, it doesn't matter. So it gives you all the artifacts, frankly, you know, searches and gives you all the artifacts that were published as part of your uh, build. So, you know, so basically we just did a build Right, and went ahead and say, yeah, I just want to find out what what was published. Right. So once you're done with that, right. Uh, and by the way, another uh, another one uh, is for you, just 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 so that you understand uh, what I just I did. See, uh, yes, I see. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it seems like uh, the audience is not viewing your screen share. So maybe you can just do it again if you don't mind. Sorry, sorry my bad. My bad. Okay, so basically, sorry about that. So all I did was, as I was talking, sorry, uh, I went ahead and provided a query here. Right? And, uh, basically, um, you know, uh, all I did was, um, here, let me let me do this, right? So I am sending a, a request, right, to Artifactory. And, um, uh, and uh, you know, I'm just providing, just it's a post request, right? I just did a build and I would like to be able to uh, find out well what was published as part of that build, right? So you can uh, go ahead and do this kind of a request. It's a search request for build artifacts, right? Um, since it's a post request, I'm saying, hey, the content that I'm sending you is application JSON, right? I'm providing the username and username and my API key. Uh, so the important thing to note here is I'm providing my password in clear text or even encrypted. I'm just providing my API key here, right? I'm sending, I'm saying, hey, for May one example, right? Uh, and uh, you know the uh, build name is Maven example, and the number is three. You can put it to nine or eight or whatever, whatever you want. Right? It gave me all the facts that were published. Right? I can do the same thing, right? With only, uh, frankly, um, uh, with the 
uh, I don't provide my username for this, frankly. That's the, that's the point I'm trying to make. Is I can go ahead and just provide my API key. I don't have to provide my username. And for that, you would use the XJFrog art uh, API header. So I'm providing a header here. Same exact, uh, you know, um, basically request, but using an API key. Instead. So now I have found out my um, uh, all the all the files that were published, and and I am now I've you know you know switched hats, and I am I'm QA. I would like to be able to go ahead and get all the artifacts right that are um, that are uh, you know part of a certain build, right? Uh, repo, let's say, right? Uh, uh, so let's okay. So here, what I'm going to do is utilize right the, the JFrog CLI, right? And um, and JFrog CLI is actually very simple. Basically, you go ahead and figure JFrog CLI by saying R. See, it asks you the server ID. It's going to ask you a bunch of questions, right? The IP address. What is the server ID? What's the what are the credentials? And then once you are done with that, right, then you don't have to worry about providing, right, the, um, you know, the IP address again and again, the, you know, the credentials again and again. All of that is, is, is frankly done for you, right? That's the beauty of utilizing, you know, JFrog CLI. We have seen over a period of time that the utilized JFrog CLI has literally, uh, you know, exponentially grown, right? Uh, so, Anyway, so this is a command from a JFox CLI. So it's an artifact command. We are doing a load, right? We are downloading it from this per repo, right? This is a virtual repo. Remember when we were pushing the artifacts, pushing it into this particular virtual repo, right? Um, I am, uh, and I'm saying, hey, whenever whatever is downloaded, please go ahead and put it into the downloads directory. And by the way, I am interested in build number three, build number five, or build number nine, whatever. Whatever you have, right? So now, right, it's actually downloading all the artifacts, right? In the background, it already downloaded all the nine files because it's doing it in a multi-thread fashion. People who are developers would understand that, right? So it's really fast, right? So uh, once we are done with this, um, right, so have um, going to downloads, right? Right, you will see that all of those uh, artifacts are actually downloaded under its appropriate directory org. JFrog, whatever whatever I built at that point in time. So this is another example of utilizing um, uh, artifact or uh, utilizing our JFrog CLI, right? So another thing that I wanted to quickly show you guys is, so let's say that you know I you know over a period of time I've been utilizing Artifactory and there's a whole bunch of stuff that has been just there, right? Artifacts, you know, a lot of megabytes and. I want to do maintenance, but I want to do maintenance in an automated fashion, right? This is where we utilize our AQL. So if I look at this, uh, you know, uh, now it's a simple uh, AQL, right? It's an AQL, it's a, it's a file spec. It's an AQL type, right? And all I'm doing is, I know I would like to find all the files right, that are greater than 10 megabytes, right? And uh, they have been downloaded two or less times. Right? Also provide timestamp if you like. So you know what a particular day, right? You know, let's say from January, uh, been downloaded two or less times, or zero or less times, or something like that, right? From since January. So you're trying to figure out, well, you know, I have some stale artifacts there, and then you're saying that hey, anything that is star, zip, RPM, GZ, or jar, right? Uh, I would like to be able to see that, right? So this AQL is going to search for all of those artifacts and give you a list, and then you can utilize a combination of, um, you can utilize a combination of our CLI and the AQL, right? For you to do searching and taking action on it in one shot, right? So I'm going to get out of this here. Oops. Okay. All right, I want to make sure I didn't override this, okay. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, utilize JFrog CLI against this. Right? And basically, JFrog, I'm running it against Artifactory. I would like to delete whatever I found find based on uh, whatever is specified in this in this file spec, which we just looked. It's, a, it's an AQL, right? And I would like to do a dry run. Dry run is a very in interesting thing because basically you are running all of this. Artifactory is going to do everything that you want it to do, but from a testing perspective, so you don't, if you, so you want to find out 
What I'm trying, to, what I'm about to delete, right? I don't want to delete, but I want to find out what I want to delete and how uh, JFrog is going to be, uh, how, how, how the CLI is going to behave, right? So dry gives you the ability for you to literally do dry run or test. So when we run this, it tells me, hey, you, I have found, you know, the following files that are that meet your criteria. Would you like to go ahead and delete it? And I said, yeah, I would like to go ahead and, and delete it. Right? So at this point in time, it said, well, since I'm in a dry run mode, I'm not going to delete it, but if I were in a dry run mode, I would have deleted these files, right? That's the reason failures, right? If you were not running in a dry run mode, uh, these particular uh, files would have been would have been gone, right? And you can see that you know it's running multiple threads, so that's the point I was trying to make it earlier, right? So anyway, um, this is something that I wanted to quickly show you, right? Uh, for you to see how to use JFrog CLI, uh, how to use uh, REST API for you to do of various automated automation tasks, okay? Uh, hopefully I'm making sense. All right, so I'm gonna stop share and I'm gonna move on. And right, we're gonna quickly talk about, um, we're gonna quickly talk about security and permissions, right? So uh, Artifactory has, you know, uh, you know, I'm sure you guys are pretty used to users and groups and whatnot. What we also have is a concept of permission targets, right? So you, what is a basically a permission target? A permission target is, so we have users, groups, users are users, groups are groups of users, right? It's nothing new about that, right? But permission target is in that a permission target is a combination of, you know, what are the users and groups that we have, right? What are the permissions that I want to assign to those users or groups? And what do I want to assign those permissions? The actual persons, right? So that's a combination. The combination of users slash groups with a, with the actual permissions and also the resources that I want to apply these permissions to, right? So uh, that's basically what a permission target, and I'll quickly show it to you guys, right? From a security feature perspective, as I mentioned, we have multiple SSO implementations, right? We go ahead and support access tokens, right? These are nothing but faceless users, right? We support API keys so that you can define an API key, right? For your user, I'm going to quickly show it to you as well, right? We do password encryption and whatnot. Okay, so it's kind of a demo time on uh, on security so let me go ahead let me now make that same mistake uh let me go ahead and uh share my screen right and um so here this is where you go ahead and configure your um on a second configure your um your security so basically let's assume that you have you know you have two groups right you have your development group and you have your ops group, right? Uh, and this happens all the time, right? You want to make sure that the development group has access to certain repos, basically development repos, and the ops group is responsible since they're responsible for prod, right? They are, you know, uh, they have access to only prod. And, you know, both of these groups don't have access to their own directive. Uh, you know, dev doesn't have access to ops uh, or prod repos and, and vice versa, right? So that's kind of a uh, example that I would say, right? So keeping that in mind, right? When we go into uh, users and group, right? So I, you know, we have, you know, two, I've just created two developers and two ops, right? And I have a group called developers and operations, okay? Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new user so that, uh, right? And, and I'll show you how easy it is, right? For you to create a user. So I'm calling it dev3. I'm going to say dev3 at gmail.com, right? And I'm just going to provide a password, very simple password, jfrog123, jfrog123. Now, please don't say this to this password to anybody, right? Um, and then, uh, you know, whenever you create a new user, you can define a particular group, right? In this case, it's readers, that's default, where as soon as you create a user, right, it automatically gets assigned to that particular group. Right, but what I'm going to do is just to show you. I'm going to take this guy out and I'm going to assign this guy to developer school. Okay, and voila, we are done creating a user. Right, then I'm going to go ahead and create uh, um, uh, another user called Ops3. Right, uh, Ops3, same thing here, Ops3 uh, at gmail.com. If I can spell Gmail correctly. Right, and um, you know, provide the password again. It's a very secretive password, jfrog123, okay? And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in operations group, right? So when I do a save, 
I've saved, so now I have th users, right? When I go into my groups, I have two groups. I have developers. In developers, I have three developers. And in operations, I have three op op ops people, right? When I go into my permission target, that's where things get interesting, right? So I have two permission targets, developer and ops. So let's quickly look at them, right? So when I go into developers, remember I was talking about the, the permission targets. It's a very simple concept, but it's very powerful, right? What are the users and groups? What are the permissions that I'm assigning it to? And what am I assigning the permissions to, right? That's the resource part. So here, from a resource perspective, I am assigning, right, the developers group, the developers group here, right, to the resources that are all the development resources, basically development repos, right? So all development related re repos, I'm assigning my developers group to, whether there's, that is, that, that repo is a Maven repo or a Docker repo or a generic repo, doesn't matter, right? What are the permissions that I'm assigning, right? So I'm saying developers, right? Uh, I'm only assigning them read permissions and I would like them to be able to do deploy, but I don't want to give them annotate permissions. What is an annotate permission? Basically the annotate permission is for you to be able to assign, right? Properties to your artifacts, right? So if you want to assign a particular property to your artifacts, if you are part of this group, you will not have that permission, right? So usually, Right, developers are not assigned. I'm a developer, so I can tell you from personal experience. Developers are not assigned uh, uh, metadata or annotate permissions because then we, you know, we have the then we will have the ability for us to put whatever tag we want to put in. Right, we want to be able to as a best practice. You want to make sure you control the tag so you can, you know, so they are in a, they are in a in a. Um, uh, they have a certain naming convention and whatnot, right? So that you can search for it. You know what you're searching for. You know what uh, metadata, what what uh, property you are, you know, utilizing for you to search for. Okay. So anyway, that's basically the permission for developers. If we go into the ops, right, you will see same exact concept. You see that the ops group has uh, permissions on all the broad re related repos, right? And here's your operations group and they have permissions on basically be able to read, annotate, and, and deploy. Of course, you can give them delete permissions, right, and whatnot, but I'm not, right now, for the sake of this conversation, I'm not giving them those permissions, right? So the idea is when I go ahead, so I'm gonna go ahead and log out. So let me let me quickly show you something, right? So when I go into Artifactory, this is an Artifactory browser, you can see that as an admin, I'm logged in as admin, so I can see everything. I can see all repos. Doesn't matter whether they are dev, they're prod, whatnot. I can see everything, right? Uh, but um, you know, if I log out, right? If I log out and log back in as, let's say, uh, dev one, right? I'm gonna say my secret is password, jfrog one two three, right? I'm logging in as dev one, right? You can see that I have very limited access again. Uh, I'm showing you via UI, but the same exact thing goes for your REST API and you know if you're using JFrog CLI, right? So you can see that I can only our our everything is security aware, and by that I mean when you log in, right? Uh, when you're looking, when you're browsing, you can only see what you were assigned, what you were allowed to see, which are basically your development, uh, you know, repos, right? And if I click on a developer repo, you notice that I am not allowed to assign properties to anything. Because remember, I wasn't given annotate, prop, annotate permissions at all. If I were to go ahead and log out of here, right, and log in as ops, you will see the difference. And the biggest difference will be the properties aspect, right? So here we go. So now we are logged in as ops user. When I go into artifact, artifactory, I only see the prod instances, right? When I click on a particular prod, Right? I can go ahead and assign properties, right? That's the difference. Remember the annotate permission? That's where the annotate permission comes in, all right? Um, we were talking about, let me go ahead and, and uh, you know, so I can go ahead and generate an API key for myself. So in order for you to do that, you need to unlock your profile. So when you unlock your profile, right? You can go ahead and, you know, uh, click on this and generate an API key. That way, you know, um, you can utilize that API key exactly the way I was showing you earlier using the REST API. You can utilize that API key, right? Instead of you, you utilizing your username or and password, you can just utilize the API key, or you can utilize your API key instead of your password. You can also get an encrypted password because a lot of organizations do not allow clear text. They shouldn't, right? It's not a good practice, but you can get an encrypted password as well, okay? so. 
Um, yeah, that's pretty much the um, the rundown on security and permissions. I know it was very quick. I know I'm giving you a lot of information, but the good thing is uh, it's all recorded. You can always go back, right? And it's uh, you, know, you can always go back and and do exactly what I'm doing on your own instances as well, right? Uh, so I'm going to stop the sharing. The last thing that I want to quickly talk about is, our, excuse me, platform, right? So um, and remember, we have already talked about artifacts. So I'm not going to get into it, right? Um, um, uh, so uh, JFrog has products where we are smack in the middle of everything, literally, from the time you check in your code to the time you go ahead and and give your uh, and, and you're ready to give your release contents to your end consumers. Right, we're smack in the middle. So Artifactory, we've already talked about. X-Ray is our software composition analysis tool. It has a very tight integration with Artifactory. It gives you the ability for you to do security vulnerability uh, analysis and license and license compliance and security vulnerability compliance, right? Uh, and uh, you know, it also helps you in uh, doing the shift left concepts in that, you know, so let's say if you're doing uh, development in Java and you're utilizing Eclipse or IntelliJ, uh, one of those, you know, one of those IDEs, right? You can go ahead and download a plugin for X-Ray, and the developer actually can go ahead and get a security vulnerability analysis and license compliance, right? Directly, basically, you know, the the developer will know what license a particular third-party component that he or she is using, right? In the IDE, and also he can also see, uh, you know, what are the different vulnerabilities that are that have been found for a particular component that he's trying to, uh, you know, import, let's say, in, into a palm file, right? So X-ray is that mission control gives you the ability for you to, uh, you know, have a single pane of glass across all your artifactory, uh, across all your JFrog products, right? So. Um, and I quickly talked about it when I was talking about the topology, the geographical topology. It also gives you, uh, you know, insights. You know, gives you different trends on your storage, on your, you know, extra coverage and whatnot. Right? Uh, pipelines is our product, which gives is a YAML-based tool, which gives you the ability for you to do to automate CI/CD completely. Right? Distribution, the combination of distribution and JFrog as nodes, is like rolling your own CDN, literally. Right? Your content delivery network. In that. Right, you can create release bundles. What is a release bundle? Release bundle is nothing but uh, you know uh, a bundle of your release content. So you have a Docker container, you have a Maven component, and you have your release notes. Right, you have your Debian package, you have your RPM package. You can put them all in one container, which we call release bundle. Right, you can sign it with a GPG key, literally make it immutable. Right, and go ahead and distribute it to JFrog Edge nodes. JFrog Edge nodes are nothing but uh, read only artifactory instances. You can have this close to your uh, end consumers. Your end consumers connect to your JFrog edge nodes right, and get your release uh, bundles, frankly, which you have defined. Right. So this is kind of a overview or a rundown on uh, the JFrog platform in general. Okay. And um, uh, so the last, but certainly not the least, this, these are the topics we covered. We initially talked about binary repository management, and right? then we talked about the CI build integration. Right. We talked we specifically use uh, Jenkins for it. Then we talked about the power of metadata and how metadata needs to be utilized, right, for you to do, for you to search, for you to resolve your artifacts. And we talked quickly, touched up on automation tools. Then we talked about the security and permissions, right, the the fine grained control that Artifact gives you on who has literally who has access to what. Then we quickly, about a minute and a half, two minutes, we touched up on JFrog platform, right, and here we are, with the recap and summary. Okay. So thank you. I'm going to quickly look at some of the questions that we have. Um, Nera, if you would like to do a survey, uh, you know, uh, please go ahead. Right. So uh, some of the questions uh, in the meantime, Nera, uh, what about the survey aspect? Sorry? Uh, it's okay. We, we already asked those questions. So maybe you can just go sure. through the questions in the Q&A box. Sure. Sure. No problem. So some, some of the questions that, that, uh, that came through, Right. Uh, oh, very interesting question. So, uh, for example, um, you know, one of the individuals asked about monitoring. I mean, the, the use cases that the person has a lot of JFR products, right? X ray, artifactory, distribution, right? Mission control, uh, right? And they were trying to figure out, well, you know, we are getting logs from every single one of them. Well, how do we do monitoring for that, right? So the answer is comparatively fairly simple, right? Uh, you can do log analytics, right? You can utilize 
Um, uh, you can utilize um, Splunk. You can use like Datadog, right, uh, for you to do log analytics on it, right? Uh, so you can get all logs from pretty much every single place from every single product, right? Do uh, analytics on it and show it on Splunk. So uh, we have the ability, you know, all the JPO products have the ability for them to push all the logs, right? We have different types of logs. Uh, Wiki is, uh, you know, uh, we have excellent documentation on logging as well, right? So you can go through that. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, and again, if you have further questions, if you're interested in, uh, in a lot of, uh, you know, things that I've talked about, if you have further questions, you're more than welcome to go ahead and set up a one-on-one -on -one technical session, right? And there is a widget there for you to actually go ahead and schedule it as well, right? So uh, if you have further questions on what I'm talking about, please go ahead and set up a one-on-one -on -one technical session on it. So anyway, that's kind of about monitoring. Another question that came in is, uh, how do I deploy uh, an NPM file using command line into Artifactory? So I... Uh, so this is kind of a, you know, the question is about NPM, right? But we can generalize it, whether it's NPM, whether it's Docker, right? Whether it's uh, a Debian package, right? The idea is we have the way we have built Artifactory is, uh, and we lay out um, all the all the artifacts, right? Is for, for us to make sure that you use, that you are, in, you're empowered to use uh, native tools like NPM, like Docker, like, right? So uh, in this, the answer to this question is set me up instructions are your best friends, right? As I talked about it earlier, right? So click, go to a particular uh, repo, click on the set me up instructions, and the set me up instructions will give you context sensitive help with respect to not only the package that you're using in this example, in this question, it is NPM, right? But also, uh, you know, what is the actual repo name? So we'll tell you exactly what to do, you know, from an NPM perspective, how to push artifacts and how to pull the artifacts, okay? Uh, another question, interesting question is that, hey, can I use Artifactory as a container registry? Please, by all means do, right? Because again, the if you guys remember the 10-step diagram that I went through, right? One of the important uh, aspects that I stressed on was Artifactory needs to be utilized as a single source of truth. And you can only do it if you have all your different types of artifacts, Docker, NPM, Maven, yada, 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 all of them in uh, Artifactory, right? So uh, in order for you to do Docker, right, you need to utilize Artifactory as a container registry for it. So you can definitely use it, right? So we are uh, pretty much uh, done with respect to time. Um, just one last question that I, this, this, this looks interesting, right? Um, do you have, price, uh, you know, for your per user, actually know the way pricing works. Frankly, we are, we are, uh, you know, the, the, the background is that the user is concerned about cost, right? So when you install an artifactory, right, you can have n number of users on it. It, it doesn't matter. So we, the pricing is not per user to answer your question, okay? Um, okay, I have a bunch of other questions there, but we will have to take them offline. Okay, um, that's pretty much it. I am hopeful that you enjoyed it, and I'm hopeful that when you get out of it, you know, uh, you know, a lot of other things uh, from the time you came into this particular webinar. Thank you for for joining me. I really appreciate it.